Hi, and welcome to our second SAP video. And my name is Andrzej. And my name is Michael. And today we are going to cover some SAP CPI topics as well as previously. Uh, today, however, we'll cover something which is called Enterprise Messaging Service. Thank you guys for the very positive feedback you left under our recent video. Yeah, this is something that drives us and keeps us motivated. So thank you and uh, we'll keep doing this, hopefully. Or not. Or not. So Andrzej, recently I had some time, uh, as everybody does, probably because of the COVID, everybody wants to learn something new. So I decided to go to our webpage and read all of your blogs from, oh, the, thank you. from the last series, which by the way, you should be able to access from the links below. And I gave it some thoughts mm -hmm. and uh, well, I have a few questions and I really hope that you will be able to answer them and uh, you know put, shed a bit more light on the whole solution okay, that try. you designed. In, in your blog uh, or the series of blogs, you were basically describing the process of generating the sales order and immediately after that sending the notification to the enterprise messaging, which is just in the middle and then it communicates with the CPI mm -hmm. yeah. and CPI then has to go back to the S4 and get all of the details of the sales order that was just created. Yeah, and then it sends to the external system. Exactly. In this case, it was an app in Cloud Foundry. So I think that maybe it's worth of uh, showing this scenario to the audience. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's take a peek at our system and I will show you how it works. Okay, so this is uh, our iFlow. So the sender is uh, S4 HANA system, which emits event but close to enterprise messaging and enterprise messaging actually sends uh, this message to CPI. But from the iFlow, you cannot see this, right? Yeah. So we have an event uh, with sales order number. The additional data, data is uh, fetched via our data from uh, our S4 system. And later it is uh, transported via HTTP to the exter external app on Cloud Foundry. So basically sales order is created on the SAP. Yeah. And then the notification goes to the enterprise messaging service, which then communicates with the CPI yeah. and goes to the title. Yeah, and this is the enterprise messaging. And uh, the event is uh, sent to this topic, which is as for it to say it's already created. Mm -hmm. And the queue is subscribed to this topic. And later, uh, the CPI is sub subscribed to this uh, queue. So it, the event is automatically transported to CPI and uh, the AFL is triggered. Okay, thanks Andre for this um, quick demo. Uh, but I guess that we would also need to talk to the audience uh, a bit more about the enterprise messaging itself, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's something new in an SAP world. And it's a service in Cloud Foundry. Basically, it's a message broker. So uh, it's a service which actually handles the communication from various systems and send it to other various systems. So we can call it as a black box, which actually handles the communication from systems to systems. Yeah, so it's basically a message broker, right? Yeah, it's a message bro broker delivered by SAP on Cloud Foundry. With the enterprise messaging, uh, there are also two important topics that I think we will, keep, we will <laughs> have to cover, topics. right? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Literally topics. Literally topics, exactly. <laughs> topics and cues. So uh, we have a special device here that you can actually draw it, right? Yeah, I will show you. Um, I will show you what we actually saw on the enterprise messaging cockpit. Okay, so on, on the enterprise messaging cockpit, I showed you like a concept of topics and queues. So let's explain it briefly. Uh, so when we have, a, let's say, the system A and system B and C, uh, we'll subscribe to a topic. So we send a message to a topic. And then for each topic, there will be a queue assigned. Uh, for for the one system, so here we'll be have we'll have a relationship one to n, and here one to one, right? Mm -hmm. So from one topic we can send to multiple systems, while having a queue. We have a relationship one to one, so we can send only one message to one system, so. What's going on, on on the enterprise messaging is that when we 
create a topic, we can subscribe one topic to many queues, while one queue can be subscribed only to one system. Advantages of the message broker are basically very well known, right? Yeah, yeah, it provides an asynchronous communication, so with a paradigm of fire and forget. So the system sends a message and forgets about it. Sender, for example, doesn't have to communicate with the client yeah, directly, right? Because it only communicates with the message broker. Yeah, and doesn't have to know the protocol. Exactly. Uh, what else from the advantages? Uh, well, enterprise messaging can be a, like a central hub of communication in your system. So like a, the main point where the, all messages are collected and distributed later. Yeah, the development is lighter as well because um, you don't have to take care of the whole m m message distribution yeah, yeah, uh, in your code, right? Because this will be handled by the message broker itself. So you only have to communicate with the message broker. Yeah, exactly. And, and you have a message persistence. So your messages can be queued inside the, the system. So in case that your receiver is not available at the moment, the message will be persisted and triggered as soon as the system is available. Plus, the architecture of your solution is much easier and uh, clear to understand, right? Mm -hmm. Andrzej, it looks nice on the paper, but what about on the system? Can you, can you show it also? Yeah, sure. Let's, Let's see. Way. Okay, so we are on the enterprise messaging. And as you can see, uh, there are several queues here. But let's take a look at this one. So we have a queue, S42 sales order. Uh, and there is a topic, sales order created, uh, subscribed to this queue, but it's also subscribed to a few others uh, queues. So we have a relationship one to n, right? So basically between the queues and topics, you have to create queue subscriptions. Yeah. But you can later send messages either to topic or queue. So you, you, do, you not necessarily have to subscribe to a topic, right? Mm -hmm. And later, uh, you can create a webhook subscription to a queue. You cannot uh, do it with topic, right? So we have a topic which can be assigned to many queues, but you can have only one web webhook in one queue. queue. Yeah. What was your question at the beginning, actually? Yeah, I had some concerns because in your blog, you were describing the whole process that when you trigger the event from the S4, yeah. It goes to the enterprise messaging, then you enrich uh, the message yeah. based on this trigger. So mm -hmm. you have to go back to your SAP. Yeah, we have a sales order number, we get more information from S4. Yeah, and but then you only have one receiver. Yeah, only which was the Node.js application, yeah. right? But what about if you have many of them? Um, well, we can still use enterprise messaging, right? Well, you could use CPI itself. As well. Yeah, of course. But it's not as flexible and it doesn't follow the rules of you know asynchronous communication, etc. Okay, so uh, it means that the better approach would be to use enterprise messaging again. Yeah, we could connect from CPI to enterprise messaging after enriching the message. And then the enterprise messaging would distribute the message to I don't know, fifteen, fifty, one hundred apps mm -hmm. we have. So could you show me this kind of uh, approach? Are you able to demonstrate yeah, it? Somehow? Yeah, sure. We can, uh, we can actually achieve it in CPI. Uh, there, is, there is an AMQP adapter in CPI, and uh, I will show you how to use it. Uh, OK, so basically, I copied the previous uh, iFlow. Um, and what we want to do here is that we want to receive an event from S4 HANA via enterprise messaging, and it's here. And reach it. So this part, this part stays the same. Yeah, and reaching code data is the same. But here we want to uh, move back again to enterprise messaging, but to a different topic, right? So what we can do, we can use an AMQP adapter, which is here, and it provides uh, uh, the subscription to a queue or a topic, right? Uh, so the configuration of this uh, adapter is quite easy. Mm. What you need to do is to go to your enterprise messaging service, and here you will have a service key. And in the service key, uh, you will have all the necessary information. Uh, so in the messaging section, when you take a look at uh, protocol AMQP, uh, your endpoint will be this uh, URE, and you can uh, copy paste it to, to your adapter. 
So the host will be exactly the same. The value is always the same. Here, the port 443, path protocols MQP 10 WS. Uh, and what you should do is use the OAuth2 authorization. I will show you in a minute how to configure it. And let's take a look at processing. We want to send the message to Q, which is named this way, MQPQ. And remember to use this prefix, it's very important. You can choose Q or topic. Uh, if you choose topic, you should use topic. If you queue, you should use queue. Otherwise, it, it won't work. And let's take a look at um, enterprise messaging. Uh, so I have created the queue named AMQPQ. Uh, and this queue will be assigned to the topic, right? Not in this case. We can use either queues or topics. Okay. In this case, our relation one to one is enough. So mm -hmm. let's use this. Okay, now I am in Manage Security Materials section in CPI, and this is the OAuth uh, credentials I used in the adapter, and let's see how it looks. Um, so the grant type is client credential, the token service URL will be derived from your service key, um, which will be shown here in the messaging section OA2. Uh, so Andre, basically what you need to do here, you have to authenticate yourself to the enterprise to messaging, the enterprise but messaging. this time not from the S4, but again from the CPI. From right? the CPI, exactly. Yeah. So the token endpoint will be provided here, uh, and you will have to copy paste it here. The client ID and the client secret will be also provided, so just copy paste it, uh, and leave uh, all the other settings as it's shown here. Uh, and then you should be ready to go. So maybe we'll perform a short test now. Okay, Andres. So now we will be basically simulating the generation of the sales order. Uh, it's the business driven, uh, business event driven architecture, right? So mm -hmm. the event will go to the enterprise messaging. Uh, it will contain only the sales order number, mm -hmm. and then it will go to the CPI. CPI will have to reach the SAP in the authorized way. Mm -hmm. to get the data. It, we will use this data to enrich our message and go back to the enterprise messaging to send it to the file. Yeah, but with a different queue, of course. Yeah, with a different queue. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So let's perform a test. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm in the T code SWUA, uh, which simulates the events in S4 HANA system. So I'm going to simulate the creation of sales order with number 5702. Uh, I'm going to, to create this event, so event was sent. Let's take a look at CPI. Uh, yes, exactly. So the sales order OData3 was completed. And when we go to enterprise messaging and look at the AMQPQ, you will see, yeah, the number of messages is increment. So Andre, at the end of the video, uh, could you also tell us what are the advantages of using the enterprise messaging along with the CPI? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I see two main advantages. The first one is that enterprise messaging will persist our message in case our C version is not available. Uh, so yeah, it, it is achievable in CPI. However, it's much more complicated than it is in enterprise messaging. And, uh, the second advantage is that it's much easier to distribute your message to multiple receivers than it would be in CPI. In CPI, would have to uh, develop a multicast or different IOs in order to achieve it. While in enterprise messaging, you just send a message to a topic or to a topic, uh, and enterprise messaging will handle everything for you, right? Yeah, with different queues assigned to the topic. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right, so Andrzej, I think you perfectly answered all of my questions. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and if any one of you guys also have questions, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. You should be able to find our LinkedIn profiles here, somewhere below the video. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in our next video. And we will definitely create more content for you guys in the future.